All right, so in this video, our goal is to set up the enhanced input component to handle the bindings. So as you can see by in the example character that's provided by the third person template, you can kind of see how this works. So we have the enhanced input component we call bind action. And in this case for jumping, we have a started and a completed. So this is kind of like the pressed and release. That's kind of the way to look at it. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bind started slash pressed to a pressed function. And we're gonna press completed slash released to a released function. And these are gonna get passed into our ability system component. Now we're gonna keep these nice and short. So we're basically going to discard uh, doing anything else. We're just gonna get this up and going and testing. So that way we know that these callbacks are actually gonna end up working. So to begin, let's head over to our data asset because we need to have some information as to what we are going to actually be, you know, working on. So I mentioned in the first video, we're going to be binding basically a gameplay tag or sorry, a input action to a gameplay tag. So we're going to need a container to simplify, well, basically just having both of those in a single space because we're going to want an array of them. So we can use... Honestly, we can probably just use a map for this if we really wanted to, but it's also nice to just use a struct. So we're going to create a uStruct of blueprint type. And let's go ahead and give it the name of F. Uh, do, do, do. Ability. We'll do F ability input action. Because we know we want to have it tell it which tag is going to be linked to what ability. So. Add our generated body, and we're going to create a U property. We're going to make it edit anywhere, and I doubt we're going to need to read it from Blueprint, but we can do Blueprint read only, and we'll just give it a category of input. So first thing is going to be a input action. So we're going to do a T object pointer. We're going to do of U input action, and we can forward declare that up here, so that way we can make use of it. And let's call this one just input action. Go ahead and copy the U property. And this one's going to be the gameplay tag. So to use the gameplay tag, we're going to need to include the gameplay tag container.h. So we're going to do F gameplay tag. And I'm just going to call it input tag like so. So basically, uh, you'll see this once we get into the editor. If we had an input action such as jump, that would go here. And from the previous example of ability.jump being the startup tag, that would go here. So we're going to create a public section in our data asset, and we're going to utilize an array of this structure. So we want this to be editable in Blueprint, so we need to make a U property. Again, we're just going to use edit anywhere, Blueprint read only, and we're just going to set the category to input. So we're going to have a T array of our ability input action. And we're just going to call this one ability inputs. Simple as that. So I want to go ahead and compile and launch because I want to show you before we actually dive into it to kind of help if you're still, you know, maybe confused at all. Uh, hopefully this will kind of clear up the workflow as to what I'm referring to. All right, so here in the editor, if we go to our third person character folder, we have our inputs here. So we have our actions. So we have our jump. So, you know, anytime we press spacebar, we jump. So what we're going to end up looking at is to give you an example, we're going to create a new gameplay ability. Again, you don't really need to follow along with this because it's going to be deleted. So gameplay ability, J underscore jump. Typoed that a little bit. So let's pretend ability tags is input tags. So we're going to give it the tag of ability. Uh, let's do ability input jump. Let's pretend that's what these are. So ability input jump. And we're also going to create that data asset off of the input ability system data asset. So DA underscore ability inputs. And we're going to add a new one. So input action is going to be jump. And the input tag is going to be that ability input jump. So what this is going to do is we have, all right, let's call back to real name for this. 
test generic tag one. Whenever I would press the key that executes this input action, which would be handled through this input mapping context. So here's our jump, it's bound to the space bar. So whenever I would press space bar, it would go through and it would find any ability which has this input tag of test generic tag one. And if we head over to our jump ability, we can see that we have the input tag, pretend that's what this says, of input, sorry, ability, input, jump. Okay, great, it found it. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna try and activate that ability, which is going to trigger the activate ability to fire, as well as any inputs we have over here, which we're gonna add more to, because we want to have two additional basically events that you can add, which are going to be input pressed and input released. So we're probably rarely gonna use any input pressed in following tutorials, but we are gonna be utilizing the input released. So that's what the goal of this is for. So we can close down the editor and we know we are mostly set up. I just realized I forgot to, to uh, delete those two assets. That'll be dealt with later. But that's basically the goal. So I'm gonna keep these videos nice and short and kind of section by section. So we have our data asset and what we're gonna do in the next video is we're going to set up a bind ability inputs function on our enhanced input component that we made. And that's gonna handle, well, basically doing what I just said. So I will see you then.